Hello and uh, good afternoon. Uh, I hope if you're watching this um, that you'll learn a little bit about podiatry at Southampton and you'll hear from our uh, a few members of our fantastic team. So welcome to the virtual open day, uh, September open day for podiatry at Southampton and we've got a, quite a bit to talk about today and then uh, I'm going to present a subject talk and then what we're going to do is then introduce um, a couple of my colleagues uh, at, uh, just to have a little discussion about and, and add a little bits and pieces and what I'd like you to do is please I put a welcome message in the Q&A please feel free to just pop questions into the Q&A whenever you like and we'll try and answer them as we go along because it'll actually give us a little bit of a break uh, and if you're watching this afterwards I think the recording is available to to you through various means if you're watching this afterwards then I hope that uh, it gives you something to think about and that it supports your reasoning for considering uh, Southampton as your first choice to study podiatry. Um, and, you know, um, the first thing I want to tell you actually is that um, I did the welcome talk for the first years this morning and they're really in enjoying Freshers' Week. And the campus is back to normal almost completely. There's been loads of social events, there's a testing program in, in progress. So, weekly testing program and uh, and they're just so glad to, to be back and have a really normal experience a normal university experience starting at Southampton here on the south coast the beautiful south coast of England where it's actually been quite mild and uh, we've had glorious sunshine up until the weekend and now it's a little bit cooler with some rain but um, it's definitely lots more sunshine hours than further up the country so that's the first thing to say so as a podiatrist, as a student podiatrist, you know, you have all the opportunities to achieve the remarkable, to be the best that you can be, to be the best podiatry student you can be, to the, and be the best trainee podiatrist that you can also be. And so we'll help you do that. And we've got a very supportive network of personal tutors, of research supervisors, um, and of module leads, and also program managers like myself. Um, and so, um, you know, we're here, we've got a really good network of support for students and I, I don't really have to sell the University of, South, of Southampton. I think we're now 77th in the world as a, as a top university in the world and we're a founding member of the Russell Group. Um, we're fourth in the Russell Group for graduate employment. We're in the top 15 universities in the country, depending on which polls you look at, I think we're 13th in the latest one. Um, we've committed to spending 300 million infrastructure over the next decade. We've just built a huge new building called the Centenary Building, which has eight floors, beautiful uh, views over the Solent, which is dedicated to teaching and learning. And it's a, it's a really nice space. Um, we've got more than 300 societies with over 12,000 members, everything from skydiving to skiing to tiddlywinks. Um, and, you know, we try to provide flexible learning. Um, certainly in the podiatry programme, we built up a really a big back catalogue of virtual, um, virtual activities and um, virtual um, lectures that uh, will provide an adjunct to the experience that you uh, that you have face to face with us and we're completely back to face to face with some blended learning but mostly face to face this semester which we're delighted to say and actually um, we've now been able to, to use this um, strap line that we are the highest ranked university in the world offering podiatry and the only UK podiatry program at Russell Group uh, University so it's a really quite a, a big accolade for us to say that and uh, we're all very proud of that and very proud of having and maintaining podiatry as a subject um, in a Russell Group University at Southampton. That's such a good university. So we're all really proud of that. But the city itself is a, is a great uh, place um, to live and it's actually been cited as one of the best places to live, one of the top six cities to live in the UK. Southampton Airport is back up and running and busier than ever, provides lots of flights to mainland Europe, lots of domestic flights, um, it's Logan Air now that with a, num a number of other small, smaller providers. Um, so there's lots of scope for travel. 
Um, it's just over an hour by train to London, so you can get up and down to London easily. We're surrounded by the New Forest, lots of beaches, links to the Isle of Wight. Got a rich history, although a lot of buildings were damaged in the war. There's been a huge amount of development in the last couple of years. Um, and you can see this quite um, recent picture of um, Ocean Village demonstrates that quite well. Got Roman history. We're the most productive port in Europe and we're a very multicultural city as well. We have people from all over the world working and living here. And uh, we have a massive cruise ship industry as well, which is again back up and running. Um, and it's it's really, you know, I've been here for 15 years and I've never looked back. I absolutely love Southampton. It's a great place to live. So there's absolutely no reason why and you should have any reservations about coming. It's a brilliant city, very vibrant. We've got a, a very successful football club, although we lost one nil at the weekend to Wolverhampton, unfortunately. But that was just a bit of a hiccup. Um, We've got fantastic, as I was saying before, we've got fantastic resources, we've got fantastic infrastructure, we've got um, good buildings, we've got some traditional, more traditional looking buildings, we've got a huge library. Um, uh, we, you'll mainly be based, if you do come to the university, you'll mainly be based at Highfield campus. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that is uh, where most of your lectures and activities will happen when you're not out on placement. So the, the student experience is, is really second to none. Again, we spent a lot of money on uh, infrastructure, on student halls. Um, there's lots of uh, student union activities, sports clubs. We have uh, galleries, um, art galleries and concert halls, and, include, and we have them in town now as well. There's over 24 halls and there's everything for every budget. We have our own bus company. And if you, um, which is called Unilink, and if you're in halls, you get a free bus pass. Otherwise, it's £3.50 a day with un unlimited travel, which is really um, a good deal. In fact, I sometimes use that uh, particular deal for getting in and out of town and stuff. So we've, one of the things that we really pride ourselves is we have like this small podiatry family, and we include students in that as well as extended family. And uh, we really pride ourselves in our student support and our pastoral care for students, problem solving for students. Um, the students within years are very friendly with each other. Um, we have personal tutor systems, so everyone is allocated a personal academic tutor. And also, if you feel that you need a little bit extra support, we have senior tu tutor systems. Um, we have brilliant access to computer facilities. The library access is second to none. You, you automatically, when you're enrolled, get access to all the academic databases, not just medical ones, but anything that you can think of. Um, free access to all the, the, the databases you can think of. And you get taught how to use them and how to access high quality um, papers and references for your assignments. So it really is um, an excellent, an excellent, uh, an excellent facility. We have well-being supports. We've got a, um, a swimming pool and an excellent gym and very high quality accommodation, all on site or within an easy, short Unilink bus ride to the campus. And thinking about podiatry generally, podiatry is in demand. We know that, we saw that during COVID, we knew it before COVID. We know that um, having podiatrists reduces amputation rates in hospitals. We know that we successfully rehabilitate patients. We successfully treat sports injuries. We successfully treat musculoskeletal pathologies. And you know, the, the podiatry patient population is set to continue to rise till at least 2050. A lot of our patients are elderly, not all of them, but a lot of them are older. And so you're really joining a redundancy proof profession in a time of great upheaval when there's so many things, you know, occurring in the world. Um, you know, having a stable career job where you know that there will be work and you know that there are jobs, um, professional jobs um, in well paid positions is uh, a real positive at this time. It's a difficult time for us all. So not only do you qualify as a podiatrist, actually, that's really, you know, a relatively easy part is, you know, we could teach you podiatry, we could qualify you as an HCPC registered podiatrist. But, you know, not only on, uh, we, we deliver so much more in podiatry than just that. Um, you will come away with a Bachelor of Science degree from uh, Russell Group University, and you'll also gain so many other skills. And one of the other things that we really pride ourselves on 
is the research experience that you'll have while you're at the university and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So what is podiatry? Well it's the science and medicine of the lower limb, management of disease and disorders of the lower limb and you'll be undertaking treatments that involve the foot and ankle and you will become a specialist in the foot and you'll be able to diagnose disorders and manage disorders and assess disorders and that will be the important um, important parts of your your training. So who will be teaching you? Well this is our fantastic team and you can see me on the left. I actually forgot to introduce myself um, at the beginning of this presentation because I don't really see myself as being particularly important. I suppose I act as the glue that binds us all together but we're we're all equally as important in each other as as each other because we all have specialisms and we all have understandings of different aspects of the profession and of research and and I really I'm very proud to 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 manage um manage this team and and um, we've got really some really fantastic uh fantastic lecturers um Dr Emma Cowley has a PhD in running Dr. Lindsay Cherry is very interested in patient empowerment and, and, um, and also in rheumatology. We have Professor Kathy Bowen, one of the only professors in podiatry, if not the only professor in podiatry um, in the world. And she in actually named Professor of Podiatry. And she leads our research team and we're all research active. And we all support students in their research projects, um, which is, um, is it's an absolute pleasure and we love doing it. We have an emeritus professor, Alan Borthwick, who just recently retired and was awarded emeritus status for his um, duty to the University of Southampton in his long-standing service. It's quite an honour to become an emeritus professor. It means you can use that title in your retirement. And uh, he has an OBE and has done fantastic things for the profession. He's arguably added, given more to the profession than uh, than you know, in, in, in many years um, uh, since our founding, um, you know, our fathers of the profession, he's one of the people that's really given the most to the profession, certainly in the last uh, 20 years. And we have, I don't have a picture of Benjamin, but we have Benjamin Jones um, joining us as a senior teaching fellow in mid-July. And um, he's got a good sense of humour, so I don't think he'll be um, concerned about um, my little avatar that I've used and he will be coming soon on the 15th of November so we'll have a we'll be back to almost a full complement um, of lecturers. So we over the years we've um, had various awards and um, the entire team was nominated for um, a VC's award for collegiality recently and myself and uh, and um, another um, colleague who um, retired last year were nominated for Southampton Student Union Academic Awards for best pastoral support. So that's just demonstrating our, to be honest, it was really the whole team, but they had to name someone. So um, it's something that we really pride ourselves on looking after the, the students. So there's all sorts of things that podiatrists do. We treat common skin and nail pro problems, including infections. And um, we look at walking abnormalities, which is called gait analysis. We look very closely at how people walk, how we can improve the way people walk. We do minor surgery on ingrowing toenails, lumps and bumps. We treat foot pain. We look at sports injuries. And also we treat people with, you know, really quite severe complications of chronic disease, which include arthritis, diabetes, poor circulation to the limbs and, and many other um, disorders some more rare disorders, some paediatric disorders and some congenital disorders. So it's really cover a, a wide gambit of um, of uh, of podiatric medicine, of, of lower limb medicine. Um, good. So clinical skills. So we do a lot of um, teaching of in-house clinical skills. Um, all our placements are actually out in real NHS departments where you join a team for blocks of you know a number of weeks so you really become part of a team and you know we've been doing this for 15 20 years so we have very good relationships with nhs trusts and we have very good relationships with the clinical educators some of which have been we've been working with for many years who are highly experienced at um, supporting you and supervising you on placement but before you go out on placement we teach you lots and lots of clinical skills that you that we then test you on before you go out on placement and that includes vascular assessment, 
neurological assessment, some uh, gait analysis, looking at the way people walk, plantar pressure analysis, looking at the way that um, the, the pressure is distributed on the foot, which can affect the way that you walk and also can cause pain and abnormalities. Um, great, we've got a question from, from Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Um, yes, placements, we have uh, qu uh, quite a number of local placements, but sometimes you, you may have to travel for placements, but if you're um, in receipt of a student loan, you will um, receive, uh, you will receive a refunded accommodation and travel if you choose to stay at a placement or for your travel to and from placement. But um, most of our placements are in Hampshire. We have placements in Dorset, Isle of Wight, Berkshire, West Sussex. Ah, another hello from Tanya. Yeah, so we have placements in Oxfordshire and we'll try and move you around. And you will, it's likely you will have one fairly local placement, but you may have to travel, um, may have to travel to a little bit for some of your other placements. But actually, you know, that's part of the fun of it. And actually, actually going to two or three different um, organisations and having that on your CV before you've even qualified is really a big major plus point um, rather than just purely having all your education in an in-house clinic, which may not reflect the actual environment of the NHS that you will then be actually working in. So we feel that it gives you a bit of a head start. And that's that's uh, and interestingly, we've been running this sort of placement program for 15 between 15 and 20 years. And some of the other schools who have got in-house um, uh, clinics to start have been moving towards our placement model um, in recent years, which is quite interesting. Um, so this is just uh, demonstrating our students actually in practice. Uh, Kathy uh, is very skilled at ultrasound and that's one of Kat, Professor Bowen. That's one of her, um, her things that she has done a lot of research in showing the efficacy of podiatrists in, in, in ultrasound compared to um, radiologists. And so um, basically uh, the, you get exposure to ultrasound in undergraduate. The middle photograph is one of our um, clinical educators in practice doing an anatomy tutorial with one of our students. And the right photograph is our, uh, some of our students um, some of our students uh, um, drawing up local anaesthetics ready for nail surgery, which is something you learn to do in second year. Yeah, you will know, in fact, um, uh, my colleague, uh, Michaeli, who's the placement lead for podiatry, has already published the placements uh, at the end of September for, uh, I think, exactly six weeks ahead. We tried to release placements between four and six weeks ahead. And also there is some negotiation about where you might go on placement, although technically um, we, we allocate you, there is, there, there is some discussion about where you go on placement. So you do have a good heads up for where you're going on placement, plenty of time to plan, plenty of time to contact your placement provider, get to know them a bit, send them details about yourself. And so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tried and tested formula which has worked for many years and, and the students once they've had some experience of our placements, they they understand the benefit of moving around NHS departments and what that can offer you. Thanks, Tanya, for your questions and um, keep them coming if you feel you need to. So where do we work? We work everywhere. And this actually, I, wor I worked in the community when I first started as a community podiatrist and I worked in quite a rural uh, kind of area. And uh, so actually we had to do a lot of things. So, you know, one day you were doing ward rounds in, in a small district general hospital. The next day you were in a women's pr prison in, uh, in, in Bridge of Allen. I worked in Stirlingshire and uh, up in Scotland. And uh, I remember being very uh, terrified in this women's prison because they were teaching the ladies how to cut hair, how to be hair hairdressers. And of course, when they saw me coming in to help someone with their foot problems, they wanted me to have my hair cut, which I did duly have my hair cut, but I was a little bit afraid, I have to say. So we work in district general hospitals, private hospitals. Hi, Charlie. Um, community hospitals, care facilities, community clinics. Private practice is a big thing now, and we're introducing a lot of private practice placements into our curriculum. Industry and commerce, people work. I, I used to know someone who worked as a podiatrist for John Lewis's, Marks and Spencer's, people work in podiatrists for in warehouses, in large factories, 
all sorts of interesting jobs. Also on the high street, you know, we have podiatrists now represented on the high street, quite lo large companies that run podiatry, um, podiatry um, companies in education and research, obviously like us, um, also in patients' homes, ho home visits, domiciliary visits tend to be for more high risk patients. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, secure units, mental health units. Again, I've got some interesting memories of working in a mental health unit and schools. And, and actually had, had the lucky opportunity to work in a school occasionally um, when, when, when it was required for um, children with special needs. And that was, uh, that was quite humbling to, to be able to, to do that. So yes, yeah, so it's, it's a vast array of experiences that you can get. And people also, um, you know, that um, set up in private practice, have visiting practices, work as associates, and then sometimes as partners and then owners of their own practice. And actually in the case of one of my good friends, maybe has a number of practices and spends quite a bit of time on the golf course and makes actually quite a very good living out of it. So that's, uh, possibilities are kind of endless if you have a business acumen as well. Um, placement locations, I think, um, we had a question about that. Isle of Wight, Oxford, Berkshire, Andover. This is just a selection. Basingstoke, Southampton, Portsmouth, Bournemouth. Uh, an example of some private practices, NK Active, Total Foot Health and Blanford Foot Clinic. We have a lot more coming online. Um, and so these are reasonably local, to be fair. Um, um, you know, not right on our doorstep, but we want you to get the, the you know, the chance to have uh, to have um, experiences at different trusts because we do feel that that is so valuable because then you can take from them the best bits and you can amalgamate those into your practices and you get experience of having different clinical educators as well. So I think it's important now to put Kathy in the spotlight. I don't know if she's there, if she wants to put her camera on, but um, Kathy uh, is is really what uh, what makes our research uh, um, podiatry research at Southampton so unique um, and we are very well known for our, our research and being a research led team and being a research active team um, and we all have make time in our diaries to make sure that we maintain our our research and also that we um, support master's students and PhD students and uh, Kathy and I just recently graduated a PhD student and uh, we all um, we all um, supervise master students and also undergraduate students as well. Um, we'll meet Kathy a little bit later and she'll um, um, come into the conversation a little bit. So yeah, so celebrating student success in research. Um, a couple of years ago, obviously we had some difficulties over COVID, but everyone managed to finish their research projects despite, you know, not even in some cases not being able to collect all their data. We did manage to finish research projects. But we did actually have some real success stories and one of our undergraduate teams actually won a research prize at the tissue viability conference and actually there was um, actual graduate um, researchers that they um, that they um, that they beat to get to win this prize and so that was um, a fantastic success uh, for them and we made quite a big noise and we've also had a number of publications from our undergraduate um, student projects, which is a really a, a huge achievement for an undergraduate to have their name on um, on a, on an actual publication. And I remember this group, Caitlin, Holly, and Alice, who did very well to uh, become part of a, a, a publication in in really quite a good journal, um, the Journal of Foot and Ankle Research. And actually, just to add that Kathy is the editor in chief of that. Um, journal um, at the moment. So we, we do have very strong links with um, uh, the Royal College of Podiatry and also the key podiatry journal, which is the Journal of Foot and Ankle Surgery. Similarly, another group of students actually won the Clinical Audit Prize on the Isle of Wight with their piece of research. And it was actually the first year that allied health professions were allowed to enter this particular competition. It was just for medicine and so this was the first year and they won it in the first year that they were allowed to be um to to present their work so that was really we were really quite proud of them so not only do you get an opportunity to actually do a real life research project but actually we've had some incredible success stories with people winning prizes presenting at competitions 
and that type of thing, which is, is really good. So just to add to what I was saying before, not only do we teach you how to be a podiatrist, but we also um, teach you loads of other skills, including problem solving, team working, time management, critical appraisal, self-reflection, changing, uh, managing change. We teach you to be an educator. You'll gain some teaching skills, some presenting skills, communication. We give you responsibilities, innovation and creativity. You'll, you'll have to learn how to manipulate data. That might be quantitative data, as in numbers. It might be qualitative data, as in you know what people's thoughts and beliefs are and uh, that type of thing. But you will um, be able to evaluate and handle data and disseminate data. And you'll also learn management as well and leadership skills and decision making. So your degree is not just learning how to be a podiatrist. At Southampton, we teach you so much more than that. So interprofessional culture. So what types of modules do we have? We have um, we <laughs> we have preclinical skills and basic science. We have musculoskeletal foot and ankle pathology, which is um, uh, we have pharmacology. You have access and supply to a small, well, actually a growing list of pharmacological agents, including antibiotics and the like long-term conditions, complex clinical management. We have a business module. As I said, it's becoming very much more common to have business skills to, to, to have private practice. Um, and and, uh, and yes, yeah, so um, we have business skill, a business module as well. So we teach you about business and about how to run a private practice. And other shared modules, we have interprofessional practice, foundations of health sciences and research skills. Um, uh, foundations of health sciences is quite challenging, but to give you a degree in science from a university like this, we have to we have to challenge you a bit. Good. So we have lots of different types of assessments. We have written assessments, which might be proposals or projects. We have reflective case studies. We have some examinations, but to be honest, we have very few. You know, sit in an, in a sports hall and write a, an exam paper. We like to try and assess you in many different ways rather than just written exams which we do not think are really fit for purpose in the um in in this decade and beyond so we have presentations vivas practical demonstrations um yeah and uh, also assessment of skills um and also reflective case study portfolios so there's something for everyone. Not everyone learns and can be assessed in the same way and perform well. So we do tend to mix it up a little bit and different um, students perform differently um, in, in different types of assessment. Um, uh, good. Anyway, so this is kind of a sample of what your um, your timetable would look like. So in level four, you're kind of forward weighted with academic blocks. Um, just before and after Christmas, then you start, and that informs your preclinical work that we do here at the university. And then you have um, your first placement um, in first year. Then you have in level five, you have an academic block where you do your pharmacology and your administration of local anaesthetics, and also your foot and ankle musculoskeletal module. And then you have two large blocks before and after Christmas. So that's six weeks before and six weeks after then an academic block and then in level six you work up you're doing your research project and another academic block then right right at the end of your program um you do a nine-week placement and um that is the longest interview you'll ever have because sometimes people actually get a job in the place that they do their final placement which is always quite uh, pleasing so there's lots and lots of opportunities away from the university the this slide shows the our College of Podiatry conference. And actually, I must correct this because we have now been uh, given the Royal Seal. So we are now the Royal College of Podiatry. So as when you qualify from, from Southampton, you'll become a member of the Royal College of Podiatry if you subscribe to them. And uh, this is the largest podiatry conference in Europe. And it's pretty vast. I think there's something like the last main conference that we had before COVID, something like 1400 attendees. And you'll see the creme de la creme, the best of podiatry presented there. And we are all over the place at this conference. We are on stage, we're on posters. The University of Southampton 
is has a huge presence at conference and uh, we've always been very closely associated particularly Alan and Kathy and Lindsay um, with the Royal College of Podiatry and we're very proud of our affiliations and associations thereof. And this is a picture of some of our recent graduates, um, at least three or four of the, the students in this picture getting involved in focus groups at the college conference and actually one of the girls there, Charlotte, I am um, I supervised her PhD looking at, her, not her PhD, her master's looking at amputation and two of the ones facing us now have very good jobs in a very successful private practice and are were uh, really a joy to teach and good students and, and that's what we do. We teach and develop good students who then go on to get good jobs and that's what we pride ourselves in. But we, not only that's what we do and what we pride ourselves in, but we enjoy doing it at the same time. And that's why we're here. And that's why you'll hear enthusiasm, because we like what we do. So it's a bit vulgar to talk about money, but it's important to know the potential, what you might be able to earn. And even just starting out in private practice, you're looking at late 20s. Um, and NHS starting salary now in band five is 25, 26,000. Um, you could start on a PhD stipend tax free at 16,000 if you wanted to go into research and then depending on time and experience and also your time and experience and also how much effort you put into your career. You can become a practice owner, you can become a professor, you can become an NHS consultant. A high level clinician is a, would be a band eight, which is um, between sort of 46 and 52, 53,000 pounds nowadays, which is pretty good wages. And you can then go on to become an NHS consultant, which would be 60 plus. And some people go on to actually train to be to do surgery and become surgeons. Um, and so that's great. Um, funding. So we now have we now actually have uh, funding for allied health professions. Now, why in their wisdom they ever cut funding for um, these professions, which are now so much in demand, including nursing, podiatry, um, is a mystery to me, but they did cut it for a while and now it's returned. And so you will get £5,000 as a maintenance grant, and obviously you can use that towards your fees. And um, there's also extra payments for some eligible students in that if you've got childcare, you might get an extra £1,000. If you are studying in a region that's st struggling to recruit, you might get a thousand pounds. And that all regions at the moment, are a lot of regions are struggling to recruit podiatrists. And you might also get a thousand pounds if um, you're studying a shortage specialism, um, of which podiatry is a shortage specialism. Um, you, you will have to double check this, but I'm, I'm sure that podiatry is at the moment a, a shortage specialism but I, I don't have those the most recent facts to my fingertips, but you'll certainly receive the £5,000 plus up to £3,000 more in addition. So good, so also we run internships. So when you qualify, so very occasionally you, you might get an internship between second and third year, but when you qualify, there may be opportunities for you to spend six weeks upwards with uh, some of our research teams. And that's a really good um, opportunity to get some active research onto your CV and, uh, you know, before you then go out and get a job. And it also gives you that opportunity to, you know, take a break later on, maybe go back to research because you've got that little bit of experience and that will set you aside from the competition if you fancy going back to research. Um, we're very lucky to um, have a visiting professor um, who uh, is just a great guy. Um, I've been speaking to him recently quite a bit because he's teaching on my, one of my modules um, and he teaches podiatric surgery and he works at West Middlesex Hospital and he's a visiting professor with us, with us which is quite a big deal. And uh, every year he has uh, an internship and he's actually um, just interviewing one of our students uh, who's just qualified in third year for this year's internship and it's a one year and potentially a two year internship at band six. So that is an absolutely gold plated, fantastic opportunity and you will learn more with Mark Tegel than you will learn 
in 10 years in an ordinary department, I can I can assure you. And so this is one of the the real um, advantages of Southampton is you do have the potential to um, have an opportunity to work with Mark and his team for a year or more. Obviously, this is a competitive um, uh, opportunity and obviously it has been, it is running now and it has been running for the last few years and I don't see why there would be any change. However, I can't obviously make any promises, but as long as Mark is still working and associated with us, I'm sure he'll do his level best to continue the internship. Other success stories, we have really good links with Singapore, both with teaching, with research, and also with uh, with placements. We have a good, um, good relationship with the Ministry of Health in Singapore. And we've graduated a whole bunch of uh, Singaporean students. And one of them that I remember very well, who I've worked with on a project recently is Manfred Mack, who um, up until very recently, I think he's gone on again, uh, is head of department at Singapore General Hospital. And, you know, he's quite a young chap. He's done very well. He's worked very hard. And uh, there is potentially opportunities for our um, UK students to have experiences in Southampton, in Singapore. Um, um, through negotiation. Other success stories, Helen Reese is one of our graduates um, since I've been working down here and for a while she was president of the Canadian Federation of Podiatry which is really probably one of the highest positions in Canada that you can have in podiatry and she was a former undergraduate student so we've got some real high flyers and we've got lots of UK students who've done really really well are in, and are in senior position Postgraduate affiliations, when you qualify, this should say the Royal College of Podiatry Apologies, I'll be changing that. Um, the organisations that will support you are mainly, the first organisation is the Royal College of Podiatry London. We also have a faculty within the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons in Glasgow and the London uh, Royal College support the Journal of Foot and Ankle Research, which is actually an international journal which came about um, as a partnership between the Australians, ourselves, Canada, and I think South Africa at one point. And so it's actually a really good journal and has quite a high impact now. And I would, you know, I'd urge you, if you're interested in podiatry, just to Google Journal of Foot and Ankle Research. It's open, it's, it's an open journal, which means you can get the articles for free and just have a read. It's really interesting. You'll be amazed at what you find. Um, good. So, that um, concludes the subject talk. Um, and so if there's anybody out there, hello, if there's anybody out there, if you want to ask me some questions, then please feel free to do so. And at this point, for anyone who's uh, watching this as a recording or live, I'll introduce back in my esteemed uh, colleagues, Kathy and Charlotte. I think, Lindsay, we'll go on for another um, maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then when things come to a natural end we'll take your your lead about when to wind up the session we can maybe put that in the chat but hopefully I've got through most of the main aspects of of our of our podiatry program um, and I'll just hand you over to I think Charlie first so Charlie um, was one of our Southampton graduates and then she stayed on um, to do a PhD she's picked up a whole bunch of experience and I'm not going to say any more I'll let you talk Charlie about about your journey in podiatry. Thank you Keith yeah so I started my um, I guess profession or career at the University of Southampton as a very keen 18 year old and through there I graduated and continued on my studies to complete a PhD and those wonderful opportunities allowed me to meet some of the most amazing people in podiatry and keep building on my own knowledge and skill set as well and um, so today I then joined the academic team so that involves teaching and lecturing um, and supporting you guys to hopefully kind of follow the same route and career path as I did um, I'm also an active researcher Researcher, so I'm keen to look at musculoskeletal health, so that's bones, joints and tissues and how they move in the foot and lower limb and what are the complications and how can we do good things using evidence to make sure that we get people better. And then another little part of the work is also looking at clinical practice. So uh, although I'm teaching and working here, I still also um, work in a private practice whereby I'm able to see my own caseload of patients um, with lots of different uh, conditions um, and able to use the full breadth of my clinical skill set. 
Um, so I have a very lovely week um, and we'll be able to meet you hopefully through lots of different points of your time at the University of Southampton in your year one, two and three. Um, there'll be a mixture of kind of practical um, as well as theory based teaching that we will do with you. Um, so hopefully, yeah, you'll come and have a really good time here with us. Key, back to you. Thanks, Charlie. That's great. Um, and I think I think you failed to mention actually that you're all you're also an active private practitioner. I think in one of the leading private practices on the in South Central. So um, and so and actually that is a real that's great for us because um, you know Charlie has consistent and constant examples um, of of real patient case studies that she can add into her teaching and which also informs her research and also supports you in your um, teaching um, and, and, and learning. And uh, we are, we're, um, you know, uh, although uh, Charlie's been working with us for a number of years on an informal basis, we were delighted to be able to recruit her formally um, about four months ago and she's been a fantastic asset to the team already. And so we're really looking forward to great things with Charlie and she's just brilliant with the students as well. And so you another example of uh, a mentor and some and someone who will be um, a great person to support you through our programme. So I'd like to um, now uh, invite Cathy to just uh, say a few words, a little bit about her journey and why she stayed with, with Southampton, why she stuck all this time with us and um, and what she adds to the to the team. It'd be great to hear from you, Cathy. OK, thanks, Keith. Um, indeed, um, I am probably the longest serving member of the podiatry <laughs> team. Um, I, I came to Southampton in 2002 and quite rightly, I stayed. Um, I've, uh, I, Southampton is a great university um, and I had been over at the University of Brighton before I came here. Um, but coming to Southampton I, I, it was a huge change for me. Um, in my past, I've been a practitioner, so I've worked in the NHS. My first roles, I, I went through the country from Aylesbury Vale to Milton Keynes to Lewisham, Bexley Heath, Erith, South East London, uh, and found my way into academia um, and through doing master's degrees and top up degrees because um, I did actually qualify with a diploma in, in chiropody at the time. That's how old <laughs> I feel like I am now. And, um, but I have travelled the journey in podiatry and yeah. uh, I've seen the profession change so much to, to what it is today. And it, it truly is a great profession to be involved in. There, there's so much choice that you will have. So anybody coming in to train, um, the foundations you get here at Southampton will, will last forever um, throughout the whole of your career. And, and I know the team here so well because I've been part of building this team as well. And I know that they are a great team and they will give you a great experience when you come here. And, and the, the experience is, is broad. Um, you get your clinical placements from, again, a brilliant team of clinical educators that are trained and looked after by the core team. Uh, all of your uh, academic work is led and nurtured by the core team who are all experts in their field. And we, we've chosen the team, the podiatry team. We, we cover a multitude of disciplines between us. So from biomechanics, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, surgery, musculoskeletal practice, um, dermatology, it, it, all the facets that you can think of are covered by the team. And that's what makes us a really rich um, environment for you to grow in. And the team and connections that they have, the networks are also valuable. And, and that, what I, that's what I think is, is good about um, a, a functioning team is that their networks are open to you as well. So if you find you really want, you know, they have the love of diabetes, um, Keith will take you on that journey with diabetes and the networks. Um, FD UK, which is the leading um, group for the UK and Diabetes UK, which involves all medicine practice. And um, we have rheumatology where Lindsay is sits on key committees with rheumatology and can take you and, and introduce you to all the leading lights um, in that. 
And then you've got Charlie, who is in the private practice. <coughs> and again, can take you on a journey through that business as well as really what it means to be a leading and innovative rehabilitation practice involving sports, um, podiatry and mechanics. So, you know, and, and then Emma as well, who, again, with all of her contacts, she has um, really a core heart um, building the profession. Her her research interests, although they are running, she's a, she's actually got involved in in core podiatry in looking at can, can we increase diversity in our teaching? And I think that's brilliant. You know, you think about all the Black Lives Matter and all the, the every movement that's gone on lately. Equality, diversity and inclusivity yeah. is really, really important. And we had to take a good look at what we do. And you look at our textbooks and the textbooks are not diverse from what you learn. So what's really um, interesting at the moment is some of Emma's work looking into that on how we can create teaching resources that are diverse. Um, for you as well. So again, that that's a really good example of giving you those opportunities um, to, to learn uh, right across the board um, when you come to Southampton. And so I guess that's the whole of my experience. Of course, I go beyond so I can take you beyond that. Um, Keith's mentioned a couple of my hats. Um, one of my main um, hats here, as well as leading the foot and ankle research programme. I'm head of the active living research group, which involves all mostly the allied health professions researchers. Um, so I look after that research group and also I lead research capacity and development for the whole of Wessex for the medics, nurses, AHPs, applied health researchers um, through the government um, funding, which is an applied research collaboration. So that's great because that gives me that really broad overview and helps me horizon scan for the team as well. So you also will, will get benefit from that. And we we look ahead um, quite far. And Keith mentioned the problems with the bursaries in, in his talk. And it's one of those things, having the roles that we all have on the committees, being able to horizon scan, we could predict that. We knew what was coming around the corner so we could protect. We put mechanisms in place to protect our students from that. Um, perhaps COVID was the one that we didn't quite predict ahead. But again, last year, what I witnessed the team, how they looked after um, all of you, all the students through this process quickly changing, you know, that that level of ability to adapt, to change, to change educational resources so quickly and still give a great experience um, just is commendable. So, you know, I, I am so lucky to work with such a great team. And if you come here, you, you will be privileged to work with them too. So back to you, Keith. As ever, Cathy, you're, you're, you're being modest and I'm very glad that you did stay and that you have stayed so long because you've been an incredible mentor to me and you're one of the reasons why I've stayed as well. So. And uh, and it is we are very lucky to have a, a really a really good team and, and I was talking to the first years about that that we actually do genuinely respect each other get on with each other and so it's so much easier to work in a team where you've got fluidity and an understanding and you don't you don't get bogged down with politics and and that type of thing so 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 we are lucky and you know I mean you know it's it's taken a long time. I mean, you know, when I first came, we were actually asked at one of our validation events, you know, what are you doing about diversity in your podiatry um, student population? And when I, I, it just pleases me so much to see the diverse nature of the first year cohort this morning. You know, we have got 24, 25 students from all different backgrounds, different ethnicities and different ages and international students as well who really add a lot to the to the cohort um because they tend to be quite studious so that you know they are quite competitive as well so so it's, it's it was it was really fun this morning to welcome uh the first years and they're just absolutely loving being you know in the classroom and uh and being being starting their university journey seemingly without you know too many constraints from um the 18 months that that we've had and it's it's just uh you know, it's just really nice to see everyone back at the university and to see the campus full, 
to see the, the leafy avenue, to see the green spaces, to see people sitting on benches. You know, the whole thing about university is not about the classroom. It's not about sitting in the library. It's about sharing ideas. It's about talking about um, potential research ideas. It's about listening to each other. It's about um, collegiality. It's about collaboration. It's just about togetherness. And it's, you know, you've got three years where you can really do, the sky's the limit. You know, you can, you can scrape by and pass things or you can really excel and you can learn an awful lot. And you can take every opportunity, and that's what I would advise you to do as a student. Take every opportunity, especially on placement. You know, if there's extra curricular things going on, grab it with all hands. We've got excellent sports facilities. You know, in the in the last five or six years, we've had the captain of the netball team. We've had two people on the first eleven rugby team. Uh, we've had people on the first hockey team. And we've got people that just enjoy being part of the sports clubs and just enjoy the so podiatry is very re well represented um, in the university. So if you're watching this, then I just, uh, you know, I hope that we've um, we've uh, given you a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of enthusiasm and, you know, encouraged you a little bit to think about podiatry as, uh, at Southampton, to think about Southampton as your first choice. Um, for podiatry because I don't think you'll you'll regret it um, and uh, you know we we're here because we enjoy it we're here because we like the job and we like developing people helping them become the best version of themselves that they can helping them become good podiatrists and ultimately helping the healthcare of the nation by improving improving foot health and that's our real goal is improving foot hot foot health and preventing um, tissue breakdown in the lower limb which is what we are all trying to do so ultimately so anyway I think uh, there's, th there's three of us here and I think we've we've all contributed pretty well and I think that the the team talk uh, has given you a good idea of, of of what podiatry means at Southampton and how it may be different from other programs and how it may be suitable for you and hopefully it, it will be so um, I'm just going to see um, I think we're probably coming towards a natural um, end. Um, is there someone in the background who's looking after us, I wonder? Rob, are you there? Yep, hi Keith. Um, Good, so is that is that all right then? I think if we don't have any questions, so we do a final call for questions. If we don't have any more questions, then I think we'll probably wind up. So just, you know, to if you're if you're if you're watching this thanks very much and if you've got any questions get in touch with us directly and we'll do our best to answer those questions and, and get back to you so thank you rob for looking after us and lindsay so capably and i'm sure we'll see you very soon good